Uh, welcome everyone to day two of BioC Asia. Uh, before we begin today, uh, I'd just like to celebrate and acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians and the land of, on which I'm joining you from today here in Melbourne, Australia, which are the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Uh, I pay my respects to their elders past and present and embrace their continued connection to this place. I'd also like to extend this respect to elders from other communities where people are joining us from today. Sovereignty has never been ceded. This is and always has been Aboriginal land. Today, uh, we're going to begin with a couple of talks from the Bioconductor uh, core team. So uh, from Laurie Shepherd and from Natish. Uh, so uh, Laurie's talk has been uh, video recorded um, and has Japanese subtitles uh, to uh, enable those uh, Japanese speakers to follow the talk as well. Uh, and in an attempt to uh, make this uh, talk even more accessible, I'm going to briefly switch to uh, Japanese. Uh, so please forgive my pronunciation, but Nihonjin no Doryo no Minyasan, Konnichiwa. Bayoshi Asia no Ninichi me o Yokoso. Hajime Masho. Kyo wa. Rory Shepherd san kara ohanashi o ukugao tokoro kara hajimemas. Rory san wa bioconductor no ko chimu no ichin des. Rory san no hanashi wa video de nihongo no jimaku ga tsuete imas. Kozo san video o hajimete onegashimas. Hello everyone. I hope you're enjoying BioC Asia 2021. I'd like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to speak today. And while this isn't live, I'm very excited to be giving my first keynote talk ever. My talk today is on Bioconductor, what Bioconductor is and how the core team helps facilitate the project. So the first thing that surprised me when I started going to more general R and computing conferences was the misconception that Bioconductor was a single R package. And the Bioconductor project is much larger than a single package. Bioconductor is an open source and open development R package repository system that focuses on analysis, comprehension, and visualization of genetic and genomic data. There are actually currently over 2,000 software packages in addition to specialized data experiment, annotation, and workflow packages that are available through the Bioconductor interface. But Bioconductor is more than just a package repository system. It really is a well-developed organization, and there are many people involved with shaping the direction of the project. Currently, there are three main advisory boards, the Scientific, Technical, and Community Boards. The Scientific Advisory Board is an invitation-only board that provides external guidance and oversight on the scientific direction of the project. The Technical and Community Advisory Boards, however, have open public elections every spring for inclusion on the board. The Technical Advisory Board advises on project and package level infrastructure, while the Community Advisory Board is really dedicated to developing, enhancing, and diversifying the bioconductor community. Anyone can run for a position on these two boards. For the Technical Board, it may be useful to have some finer knowledge of bioconductor and programming or a specialized scientific technology background, but the Community Board especially really wants to try and be as diverse as possible and aims for a mix of races, ethnicity, education level, and bioconductor experience. So if you're interested, look for a call for applications on the Bioconductor Support Site and Community Slack channel in early spring. So thinking back on how this started, that Bioconductor is more than just a single package. It's a package repository and an organization, but even more importantly than that, probably most important, it's a community. So Bioconductor really aims at trying to provide resources and infrastructure to link experienced package maintainers, developers, and users with the inexperience to foster this collaborative and welcoming community of our Bioconductor users. So how and where does this community connect? Well, there are a couple different places, most notably the Bioconductor support site, the community Slack channels, and the numerous conference, workshops, and training events that happen through the year, and also a newly developed mentoring ship program. And I can just take you briefly through each of those right now. 
The Bioconductor support site is the first place many users go to ask questions and get advice on analysis or to troubleshoot using Bioconductor packages. This support site is specialized to Bioconductor package questions and every maintainer that submits a package to Bioconductor is required to sign up so that if an asked question gets tagged with their package name, they would be notified. There are thousands of users on here and it can be a great resource to tap into community knowledge and experience. So you can search by clicking on a package tag, or you could go to the tags tab and search for a package to see what already existing posts and questions are available. If you don't see anything relevant to what you need, you can always post a new question by clicking on the ask a questions tab. Make sure to have an informative title and be sure to tag any relevant packages that the question relates to in the post tags. The body uses markdown or plain text or HTML. If you're having issues or errors running code, be sure to post as much of the code example in the code section and always include the platform and version of R and Bioconductor you are using so we can tailor the responses appropriately. The Bioconductor team also uses the news feature to post important announcements for releases, packages, conferences, elections, and other such news events. There's also the Bioconductor Community Slack channel, and I really encourage everyone to join the channel as it is great for conversation. There are a number of specialized channels that may be useful for a very particular discussion, like microbiome, metabolomics, a proteomics channel. We also have channels to ask about core infrastructure pieces that we'll discuss a little bit later on, but channels like the BioC Builds for build system questions or BioC Hubs for questions on like Experiment Hub, Annotation Hub, or BioC File Cache. There are a number of conferences, workshops, and training events throughout the year. There's a Bioconductor event calendar off the main website that anyone can submit Bioconductor-related events to advertise. Anyone is welcome to submit events for inclusion on the page, either by emailing events at bioconductor.org, or we're working on a form version that should be available soon. Minimum requirements for an event is a relevance to Bioconductor and a willingness to adhere to the Bioconductor Code of Conduct. Conferences are always a good time and a great way to meet other members of the community and network. Hopefully you are all enjoying yourselves here at BioC Asia, which has become an annual event. There's also the annual Maine BioC conference, normally held in the United States in late summer, and the annual Euro BioC conference, and the next currently one scheduled is for March 2022. In recent years, we are excited to see initiatives in other countries as well that Bioconductor is glad to send representatives and be a part of. The community of bioinformatics software developers in Mexico and Latin America have started organizing yearly week-long workshops and various conference and workshops throughout the year to aid in development of the Spanish-speaking R and Bioconductor community. And the H3A Bionet and H3A Africa launched a series of workshops and webinars to help advance the African coding and research communities, which Bioconductor took part in also. These, again, are just a few of the many workshops, webinars, and training opportunities launched around the world throughout the year, and we are really excited to see that the Bioconductor community is growing and that we can be a part of research worldwide. So those are some great resources to connect to the community, but now I want to take it back to this slide on organization just for a second because we sp skipped over the last entry, the core team. The core team plays a vital role in the functionality of the project. It's a small dedicated group of developers that help develop, maintain, and enhance core packages and project level infrastructure. So what does that really mean? I get the feeling that most people think that the core team only takes care of core packages and package maintenance, but we really do so much more than that. We talked about Bioconductor being a project. There's a lot of infrastructure pieces that are in place to make the project function. So thinking about the resources we just went over, what core infrastructure is involved that the core team maintains? So first there's the main website, bioconductor.org. The core team is responsible for updates and website upkeep. There's an entire code base for the website and the website is regenerated about every 20 minutes to make sure that there is constant up-to-date information. Similarly, there's a code base for the support site website. We thankfully have support and help from the BioStars that our support site is modeled after, and in particular Nate that assists, but we still have core team involvement in the upkeep and maintenance of that site. 
There's also monitoring and answering questions that appear on the community Slack channels, many times resulting in follow-up and investigation of issues, comments, and concerns. And many core team members participate in presenting material for conferences and workshops. There's also normally components of the conference like specialized web pages, systems for hosting workshops, and having computer environments for participants that the core team also helps manage and facilitate. So hopefully you can already see the importance of this back-end infrastructure. So continuing on, I want to think about Bioconductor from two perspectives, a user and a developer. And along the way, we'll discuss additional important project infrastructure that the core team helps develop, maintain, and enhance to try to provide a good experience to the community. So thinking about a user, how does a user interact with Bioconductor? Traditionally, I think most users were using our terminal or our studio, which is still highly popular and widely utilized. But there are also newer available technologies and projects like using Docker images or cloud-based initiatives like the Anvil project that allow a different user experience. For our terminal and our studio users, there's a CRAN package BioC manager that is downloaded and installed from CRAN and provides access to all packages in Bioconductor and CRAN repositories. The Anvil, which stands for Analysis visualization and informative lab space is an NHGRI project. It provides a secure cloud-based computing environment for analysis. I will not go into detail here about Anvil and Docker images, but I encourage everyone to attend Natasha Taraga's talk, where I believe some of these concepts and resources will be covered. I will mention that the Anvil Bioconductor package provides a different install function designed specifically for use with the Bioconductor Docker images and the Anvil computing space that can provide fast binary package installation. And why is this significant? Well, some packages require compilation, which can take several seconds. Package binaries are pre-compiled, allowing for a near instantaneous installation. The limitation of binaries is that package binaries are specific to the system configuration to which they were generated, which is why they're only available for use with the Docker. Another important concept for users, especially new users, is how to find packages of interest. In BioC Manager, there's a function available that shows a listing of all available packages, or you could use a search term to find packages, but that assumes some a priori knowledge. The BioC Views page and package landing pages can be really useful for finding packages. Off the bioconductor.org homepage, there's a link to available software packages. This takes you to what we call our BioC Views page and includes software, annotation, experiment, and workflow packages. Books are coming soon. You can either search for terms of interest, like single cell or proteomics, to get a list of packages, or if you know a package name, you can search for it specifically, like genomic ranges or summarized experiment. The rank ordering is in order of most downloaded to least downloaded, and if you click on a package name, it takes you to a Bioconductor's package landing page. The page has badges to indicate package health and information on the package, like the description, documentation, what package dependencies or reverse dependencies there are, and in the bottom, a link to download the package directly instead of through BioC Manager, access to the code base in git.bioconductor.org, and package download statistics. Probably the most helpful on this page is the package documentation that a user can browse through before downloading a package to see if it's appropriate for their type of analysis. So before switching to a developer's point of view, let's revisit the core team and in these few concepts for users, what sort of infrastructure is required in the background. So there's obviously some package maintenance with regard to BioC Manager, Anvil, Anvil specific packages, and BioC views packages. There's a concept of a daily build of all Bioconductor packages so that they're available through the BioC Manager install function. There's generation and upkeep of Docker images, so Bioconductor Docker images for both release and develop branches, and an Anvil-specific Docker image that needs to be submitted to the Anvil platform. There's also the binary package generation for those provi packages provided through Anvil install. And then there's the website code and website interaction so that you could see that BioC views page and package landing pages and the constant regeneration of the website to make sure that all that information stays up to date to the latest. And then at the bottom of the packing landing pages, I mentioned it briefly, but there's package download statistics that get calculated for each package as well. 
So again, hopefully that you can see, while it may seem like trivial and basic functionality, that there's a lot that needs to be in place behind the scenes for everything to function properly and interact properly. So the core team has a subset of packages that are considered core packages and core team maintained, but most of the packages in Bioconductor are community contributed. Anyone from the community is welcome to develop and submit a package to Bioconductor. But there are certain specific package requirements that should be implemented when developing, and a package will undergo a review process. Once a package is accepted, then it's added to the daily builder and available through BioC Manager install. So package specific requirements can be found at contributions.bioconnector.org and the developer section of the main website. We are in the process of moving information from the developer section of the website to the contributions.bioconductor.org location. So eventually all the information will be in one location. But let's go over some of the key concepts that should be implemented when developing a package. One of the main things is reusing or extending existing classes and using the well-developed import and export methods for certain data types. Bioconductor has the concept of interoperability. So if a user wants to use one package to import, a different to normalize, and a third to visualize, the manipulation of data from one package to the next should be min minimal, if not eliminated completely for the user. So ideally, the output of one should be the input to another. This is why we like to emphasize using or extending any of the existing class structures. Another good practice worth mentioning is the caching of web-based data when possible. This way, if a user is without internet or requests the same file from a website or a website is temporarily unavailable, they don't have to re-download and could potentially use a previously downloaded version instead of having to wait for the internet or re-download data. Another good practice is implementing unit tests. It's strongly recommended. While tests can seem burdensome, if added to the development process early, it can actually aid in development. So testing for things like edge cases and having both positive and negative tests can ensure proper, proper functionality. The biggest thing that Bioconductor is also going to insist upon is a really detailed vignette with runnable code examples. So vignettes are compiled when built, so it can also help ensure proper functioning code. But we like detailed vignettes because ideally this gives your users um, an understanding of the package and the unique functionality that the package provides. And these are just a few concepts of the many that you'll find on this contributions.bioconductor.org page. So once a package is developed, a user then submits to the Bioconductor new submission tracker on GitHub. There's some useful information on the home page about what to expect and how to submit related or dependent packages. But to submit a new issue, you go to open a new issue under Bioconductor contributions. The title should be your package name. All packages currently require a GitHub repository location and the link should be updated pointing to this location. A package then is in awaiting moderation stage. A reviewer will be assigned and the package added to our get.bioconductor.org location and a build triggered on all three major OS platforms, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Once a package is building and checking without error, the reviewer will do an in-depth review of the package and offer comments, suggestions, or request changes consistent with Bioconductor package requirements. There's an open dialogue in the review process open to the community and governed by the Bioconductor Code of Conduct. Once a package is accepted, it's added to the nightly daily builder. Bioconductor uses Git for version control of package source code. Bioconductor builds only from git.bioconductor.org and users must push changes to this location to propagate them to users. From a few times a week to daily, the Bioconductor builders will do a git clone a version of the package and then do an r command install, r command build, and r command check. If a package installs, builds, and checks cleanly and has a valid version bump for changes, the package is propagated and becomes available through the BioC Manager install function. Maintainers can find the build reports from the main website in the lower right corner marked build reports. This page indicates how frequently the builds take place. If we click on browse for any of the build reports, you'll get a list of every bioconductor package and the status through each stage. 
The top of the page has a timestamp to indicate when it was generated, and each package has information on the version, git commit, and git date that the builder used for that report. You can click on any stage indicator for more information and results. So what infrastructure is needed for everything just discussed for submitting a package? Well, there's evaluating and updating of the package guidelines. There's the code that interacts with the package submission process on GitHub and code specific to the new submission process on each of the three develop builders. The core team also participates currently in package reviews for new submissions. There's facilitating the entire Bioconductor Git ecosystem, which includes the git.bioconductor.org main repository location for all of the Bioconductor packages, a Git contributions app that manages SSH credentials of users, a Gitolite application that manages which users have access to which packages, and Git hooks that respond to different triggering events. There's also the Bioconductor build system called the BBS, which is a large undertaking of the core team. There are minimally six build machines that require system administration and the underlying code base on each to handle the Git clone, the R command install, the R command build, the R command check, the package propagation, and the generation of the build reports. And there's minimally six builders because for both the Bioconductor release and Bioconductor Devel branches, we cover the three main OS platforms of Mac, Linux, and Windows. So briefly, I wanted to also touch upon why Bioconductor has a release in a Devel branch. Bioconductor is closely associated with R. Most years in spring, R has a release. Bioconductor then needs to update which version of R is being used for packages to ensure continued proper functionality. Bioconductor has two releases a year, a spring and a fall where the Devel branch is released and becomes the new release. From roughly late April and early May, when the new version of R is released, both the Bioconductor release and Devel branch use that stabled release version of R, or R patched version. In fall, normally late October, early November, Bioconductor does a second release. At this time, the Bioconductor release branch still uses that stable RR patch version, but the Devel Bioconductor branch switches to use RDevel in preparation for the next R release in spring. Having a Devel branch allows maintainers to adapt to changes in base R, as well as changes in any other dependent packages that they may have, and then have minimal disruption or downtime to the end user. Bioconductor encouraged package maintainers to enhance and make major changes on the development branch and restrict changes on the release branch to minor bug corrections. Again, also reasoning that there would be a place for development and potential breakage without affecting the end users. The core team is always extremely busy during release time and with release-related tasks. It involves updating versions of R and Bioconductor on minimally the six builders, emailing maintainers that have ignored the build failure notifications to try and fix their packages to avoid deprecation and removal from Bioconductor, reviewing the influx of newly submitted packages for inclusion, fixing or modifying any core packages that require such attention, adding release-related annotation resources, creating new branches on get.bioconductor.org for all of the packages for the new release, and collating all the news files from packages to generate the release announcement. There is another key infrastructure piece that the core team maintains that has gained increasing popularity in recent years. The concept of the Bioconductor Hubs, Annotation Hub, and Experiment Hub. As a brief background, Git does not allow large files, and our current Git system does not support Git LFS, which means there has to be an alternative way to provide large data sets to users. Bioconductor insists data to be hosted on a secure public or institutional server like Zenodo, Amazon S3 buckets, Microsoft Azure, among other trusted sites, or direct access to web resources or databases if available, like Ensemble or NCBI, rather than privately hosting data on, say, a GitHub or a Dropbox. If you're developing a package, we encourage a discussion about data hosting on other platforms on the biosli-devel at r-projects.org developers mailing list. 
If a maintainer does not have access to such a resource, Bioconductor provides an Amazon S3 bucket for use. We are, however, actively investigating a migration of location from Amazon S3 to Microsoft Azure. Developers can download resources directly from the trusted sites, but must implement a caching mechanism in the background. And we highly recommend the Bioconductor core package, BioC File Cache. The other alternative to downloading directly and implementing BioC File Cache is to list the data in the Annotation Hub or Experiment Hub. The Annotation Hub and the Experiment Hub are databases with references to the external data for download. The hub interfaces provide a querying mechanism on metadata provided at inclusion of the data into the database. When using the hub interface for download, it already uses BioC file cache as a caching mechanism, so a maintainer does not have to implement it themselves. The other advantage to listing the data in the hubs is the findability of resources outside of R or outside the use of the associated bioconductor package. And there are Bioconductor core packages, Experiment Hub and Annotation Hub, that can be queried for data of different types or from different sources. The resources can be searched either through a query performed within R or investigation through the Hub APIs at annotationhub.bioconductor.org or experimenthub.bioconductor.org. The API is admittedly a little crude and we are working on a revamp. There's also a shiny version to Query Hub resources that has been developed and should be announced soon. The query function in R will take a list of terms and return resources matching search criteria. For example, you can see we queried here for Ensemble, GTF, Release, 103, and Homo sapiens, which returned four results. A single bracket using the AHID of interest will give more information on the resource and a double bracket will download and cache the resource. The requirement to add data to the hubs is a package that is already or will be submitted to Bioconductor that includes an inst metadata.csv file with metadata for the resources that will be added to the database and an inscript script directory with files that indicate how the data was generated and relevant source information. The vignette creating a hub package, experiment hub or annotation hub, in the core package hub pub describes this in more detail. Other questions can be directed to the hubs at bioconductor.org email. The hubs currently involve a lot of interaction from the core team. We are working on making enhancements and restructure to try to make it simpler and easier to submit and maintain hub data with limited core team interaction. Currently, when data is submitted to the hubs, a core team member will evaluate the data and metadata provided, if needed, assist with uploading data to the bioconductor provided location, again currently that's an Amazon S3 bucket but that could change, and update the database for the metadata provided so the metadata is available through the query functions. Additionally, core team maintenance of the hubs includes managing server code on the Amazon Web Service EC2 instances that host the website and API endpoints for both hubs, and general core package maintenance of the relevant core packages, experiment hub, annotation hub, BioC file cache, experiment hub data, annotation hub data, and hub pub. So there are still other core related tasks and in infrastructure that we just haven't had time to touch on. Things like the Amazon Web Service resources that we utilize and the Microsoft Azure project resources. But um, hopefully this gave everyone an idea of how much the core team supports in addition to just general core package help and development. So with that, I would like to thank the conference organizers for inviting me to speak. It really has been an honor. And thank you to my fellow core team members. I appreciate all the work and effort we all put into keeping the project moving forward. And most of all, a thank you to the Bioconductor community. Bioconductor would not be successful without the contributions of all of you. And whether you're a first time user or a long time contributor, we really hope that you found a welcoming and helpful community. So please feel free to send me any questions to my email or on the community Slack if anyone has any questions about this presentation. Thank you, cheers.